because this is a great place to practice. It's very difficult to practice on the street or on the road because there's too much input, too many cars, too many risks, too much stuff going on. It's hard to practice. Out here, you can focus. There are no, um, no nobody turning left in front of you. Nobody, uh, you know, no wild hogs coming out of the brush in front of you in the hill country. No deer, no dogs. Anybody ever seen a wild hog in the, in the hill country? I have. Um, they're scary. If you hit a hog, you're going to go down. Um, you can develop safe habits. You can learn safe habits, and you can practice safe habits, and then they become your riding habits. You know, you 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 develop as a rider in a, in a controlled environment, which really helps a lot, I think. Um, and the environment, again, it's it's it, it cuddles you. It makes you feel safe. It's everybody's going the same direction, and nobody's trying to take you out. I feel that way sometimes on the road that the cars are sort of out to get me, and I got to figure out how to stay away from them. Um, and the other thing we're going to talk at kind of at length about today is fitting your speed to the riding environment and how that can protect you and your bike. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to hit somebody over the head and say, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. That never worked for me. It, it, I don't think it works very well to just try to tell people to slow down. What, why, when, how, what happens if I don't, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I think what works a lot better and what a lot of people feel is that if you fit your speed to your riding environment, then you're always going to be in good shape. You know, one riding environment, uh, you know, city traffic, it requires a whole different mindset and speed than, say, on the interstate, and or on the track, or out in the hill country. Every riding environment has its own limitations. And um, if you stay within those, you can stay safe. And so we're going to kind of look at that. At the end of the, in session five, here we have a, I have a bunch of images of places that I've been and street scenes and various stuff and we'll all hopefully get together and kind of analyze those and figure out what that what works for those particular environments. The track, city traffic, no matter where you ride, the environment is always changing. So think about that today. If, if you have one overarching thought today, think about how am I going to match the speed to my environment. This track is great for that because we have basically four big drag strips with some corners in between. And um, we also have some pretty scary corners that are, uh, require your focus and attention that you have to adjust your, your riding to, especially 7 and 8, uh, require you to really pay attention. So the environment in 7 and 8 is a lot different than it is, say, in 10, where you have some nice camber and it's an uphill turn and you feel really stuck to the track and real confident. Well, 7 and 8 don't exactly instill confidence, so you really have to focus on that. Those two are in different environments, so you have to adjust your speed accordingly. So, on the track, keep your focus in front of you. What's behind you doesn't matter. That's why you tape off your mirrors. It's everybody's responsibility to be, keep the person in front of them safe. The person in front of you, their life is in your hands because they don't, they can't see you. So it's everybody's responsibility to keep the person in front of them safe. And if we all do that, we all leave in one piece, bikes nice and shiny, just like we got here. Obviously, never turn around. Don't, don't go in any other direction than the riding direction. That hopefully goes without saying. Don't stop on the track. If you're here with a buddy or a friend and they crash or something, just keep riding. We have, we'll have the crash truck out there. We'll have the track marshals. We have the corner workers. Everybody is paying attention to what's going on on the track in various places. Don't, don't stop and help your buddy because that could create another problem. Somebody could run into you. It could be a mess. An instructor will stop. Instructors will take care of the situation. So if you're out here with a friend, try to realize that, that we'll, take, we'll take care of it. Not, don't stop for your buddy to help them out. Um, this is a real big one. Avoid erratic line changes. Um, here on the track, because we're responsible for the person in front of us, it's important that you don't make any radical or dramatic line changes because someone may be coming by you on a straightaway, for example. And so if you operate your bike in a predictable way, then the person behind you can predict what you're going to do. Right? Much less likely to have any kind of a collision or mishap as long as if you make your line changes gradual and progressive rather than sudden and dramatic. And, and that's a hard thing to remember when you're out there on the track, but just realize that if you do something erratic, the person, the people behind you can't predict what you might do. And so they might hit you. So be progressive, be gentle with your line changes. It's a six foot rule when passing. So all morning, we'll pass only in the straightaways. Um, six foot becomes kind of problematic on the big straightaways because we're going 100 miles an hour and at, 80, at over 100 feet per second, six feet isn't very far. So think, when we get up with your speed up, think more about two, three seconds rather than six feet. But if you're going to go around somebody, don't buzz them. 
that's there for the six foot rule is so you don't go whisking by someone within inches of their handlebar and and cause them to have to exit the track and, and hit the restroom so don't do that to people don't frighten people by buzzing them give them a lot of space go around them and get back in and keep going um, and watch for the corner workers especially the checker and the red you know we'll go over the flags here in a minute but um, keep your eyes on the corner workers you know not to the expense of watching the track but use your peripheral vision to see what the corner workers are telling you because they're trying to communicate with you with those flags those flags are there to communicate with you and let you know what the, what's going on on the track flags um, yellow flag off track incident somebody's gone off the track and they want everybody on the track to be aware that something's going on and don't chop the throttle don't slow way down creep around the track maintain your speed be aware something up ahead is going on and you should be aware of it so that's a that's a proceed with caution but proceed is the key keep your maintain your speed red flag is a lot different that's an on-track incident that means somebody's bike or part or oil or person is down on the riding surface then you roll your speed off gradually bring it down to 20 or 30 miles an hour proceed around the track and exit at the first opportunity that because we need to get the crash truck and hopefully not but perhaps the ambulance out there we need to clean the crap off the track whatever it is so proceed around slowly and exit because you don't know where that is you might come over one of these many blind entries here you might come over an entry and somebody would be laying in the track so red take it down gradually so nobody comes up from behind you so everybody knows what's going on raise your hand let them know you're slowing down and proceed and exit um, black something's wrong um, either uh, something's wrong with your bike or something's wrong with you the way you're operating your bike and usually a corner worker will either hold it out and point it at you or it'll be wound up and they'll point it at you they will point it at you and then you proceed around exit and see the track marshal find out what what happened we have silencers fall off or you know fenders and stuff falls off bikes or or people are uh, riding in a unpredictable fashion we want to you know not scold you but take you off the track and say hey you know this could be a problem you might want to modify your behavior here because you're frightening scaring you know causing problems so um, the other thing it can mean though is later in the day you might get the black flag pointed at you and you because you might have been selected the smoothest rider so in each level level one two and three we pick a smoothest rider and that's a discount on photography from Blair and um, that might be you so they'll let you know that by pointing the black flag at you that'll be in some of the later sessions and the checkered means it's over the sessions ended. one problem we sometimes have is people are sort of like oh, I didn't put the checker I didn't quite see that it was just out of the corner of my eye and they take another lap so don't buzz the checker because the track marshal will, will, will give you some grief about that when you see the checkered flag maintain your speed and exit and you'll appreciate that when it's your turn to get on because the other group will be getting off in a timely fashion so if you buzz the checker or pretend you know get a little bit checkered flag denial that you didn't quite see it or came up right when you went by the flag and you saw it but you might not have seen it just exit and you'll get another session so re realize that's the time to exit the track um, it doesn't mean you win nobody <laughs> nobody wins right we're not racing no trophies what's that no trophies today all right exactly uh, pit out <clears throat> track marshal will be right here on this area here and he'll direct you down here and you'll pit out right here at turn two there's a blend line there a line that should separate the riders from the in people entering the track observe that blend line both when you're on the track and when you're entering the track um, and, and if you are entering the track pick up a, a blank spot obviously you're gonna um, wait till you don't see anybody coming around and you're gonna try to scoot on and then stay to the right and observe that blend line it is a little bit more of a problem here um, it's not as long as everybody pays attention to it but the problem with pit in which is right here at the on the end of turn 11 is that the exit or the pit in is also right in the riding line all right so it can be a little bit of an issue as soon as you come out of turn 10 signal so that they, whoever's behind you knows all the way down this straightaway that they're gonna have to make some kind of an adjustment for you exiting the track because the riding line is right here on the outside it's a double apex corner and the, the you know the middle of it is right here and then people have to get their bikes bent back around and down that straightaways and you're gonna to have to hug around the outside and exit so as soon as you come out of 10 which, wait raise your hand because you always raise your left hand right never take your hand off the throttle so um, be aware that 11 
and the and and pinion can be a little bit of a dicey situation. So give everybody plenty of time to know what you're going to do.